Hello, I'm Jerry Kirkpatrick, and I'm teaching the fundamentals of metal shaping. A while back, uh, I got a phone call from a fellow from Sacramento who asked me if I could do some repair work on a 1923 Wayne gas pump. And obviously, I said, sure. A couple of weeks later, he showed up at my shop, and in the back of his pickup truck was this. So what needed repair was the bell portion on the top of the pump, just under the globes, that had been cracked on both sides. So making this repair is what this video is all about. In this part one of a two-part video, you'll see me using a Magnaflux uh, to determine how long the crack is. I'll also be sharpening a drill uh, that can be used for cast iron, plastic, and brass. You'll also see how I go about preparing a crack for welding. In part two, we'll start off with doing the preheat and you'll see how to use a stick to determine the temperature of the piece that you're heating up. So let's get started. So you're probably saying, Jerry doesn't look near as ravishing as he usually does. Well, this is going to get ugly real quick. So this is the piece that I got in. You can see it's all rusty, dirty, and such. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is clean this off so we can start to see where the crack is. Uh, I can see just a little bit of it here in the large chunk of dirt. Um, and it comes down, and I think it finishes up somewhere around here. But uh, we'll find out exactly how far it goes in just a second. So now it's a little easier to see. It starts here, obviously, at the end and comes down. Now it looks like it ends right about here. So I'll make a mark where I think it's ending now. <clears throat> and we'll see what it actually is uh, after we use the Magnaflux. Uh, so we'll get that out. Set that up just so it arches over. So now I can see clearly that it comes down to right about here. So I'm going to take a center punch. Put it right at the end, about a sixteenth of an inch past 
where the crack is. So the next thing I'm going to do is just draw a line right next to it with a silver pencil. So while I'm grinding, uh, I'll have an idea. Sometimes when you're grinding, the crack itself has a tendency to go away. So I know I'm about an eighth of an inch away from it. So if I stay <clears throat> an eighth of an inch to that side of the silver line, I'll know I'll be right down in the crack. And the reason for drilling that hole about a sixteenth of an inch past where the hole is, uh, I'm going to wind up drilling a quarter inch hole and I want this crack to exit into the hole but not be on the other side of it. So the next thing I'm going to do is drill a 3 16 hole. And then next I want to drill a quarter inch hole, but uh, if you drill cast iron, uh, actually brass and uh, plastic, with a drill ground uh, just like for steel, it's going to be too aggressive. And as you're drilling, it's going to want to grab and pull itself in and what's even worse is when you get to the end um, it will break through and then just break the whole bottom end out it'll mushroom out of the bottom so uh, I grind them uh, with a little less aggressive point so let me show you how I do that now This is a quarter inch uh, pilot point drill made by DeWalt and I buy them about 10 at a time because I use them exclusively for drilling out spot wells. So the first thing we're going to do is just grind it like a typical drill just like you would for steel or anything else. using the coarse wheel for getting the primary shape. Getting both flutes the same length. 
So that's good for this portion. Now let's go over to the fine wheel and I'll show you how I grind this portion to make it better cutting on both cast iron or plastic or even brass. Okay, now I'm over on the, the fine wheel and what I want to do is decrease the amount of angle. I want to make this area in here not as, of a, as aggressive. So there you can see that both sides are about equal and the angle of this flute has been cut back. So it uh, more or less scrapes, I guess, I don't know if that's the correct term or not, but uh, it won't break through when you get to the bottom of the hole, it's not going to uh, break through and chip a bunch of it out and you'll notice that uh, when using a drill like this uh, you'll get more like a powder coming out of the hole instead of um, any kind of chip okay so I've got the drill uh, sharpened properly it's not going to be uh, too aggressive. It's not going to yank itself in there as I drill. So here we go. Much better than with a, a standard drill. And the next thing is countersink. I want to pull this out as far as possible, give myself a nice uh, uh, slope into the hole. So when I start welding, I can get right down into the bottom, fill the bottom of that hole up, and then start filling it to the top, and then make the run. Alright, so there I've got it almost uh, to the three-quarter inch diameter on top and it's just a feather edge on the bottom and next I'll cut the, the groove out uh, right in the center of the crack with a cutoff wheel. Okay, now I've got it cut with a very thin wheel 
Now I'm going to come back with the uh, thicker cutoff wheel and feather in both of the corners. Okay, so there it is. Uh, as you can see, I've ground all the way through uh, where the crack was. I took just a slight amount off of both sides. Uh, so as I'm welding along, I can actually flow the material, the cast iron rod, down into uh, past the bottom edge of the crack, uh, making 100% weld. Uh, welding with cast iron welding rod isn't exactly the same as welding with regular rod. If you were oxyacetylene welding, uh, with oxyacetylene on steel, even on aluminum, uh, if you make your bead, three times as wide as the thickness of the material, you'll have 100% uh, penetration. With cast iron, uh, you'll get the part, the cast iron, up to melting point, which is around 2700 degrees, uh, same as steel. Um, You'll get it up to that point, and then the rod that I use is a quarter inch diameter. So I will wash uh, just the leading edge. I'll get the leading edge molten, wash it off into the puddle, and then take the rod away and then manipulate it, move the flame about until I see uh, the whole puddle move forward. Uh, and move forward where I want it to. Uh, meaning, I, I'm hoping that you'll be able to see this um, as we go along. Uh, it's, it's quite fascinating to watch. Uh, it's not just like heat, dab, heat, dab, heat, dab. Uh, you put a wash a, a, a drop off in and then you meld it in with the primary piece. So uh, next uh, we're going to be doing some preheating. So let's get on to that. Oh, and I'm going to show you how to use a stick. So I hope this first part of the video was informative and you may have learned a few things that are not widely known. If you're interested in doing some cast iron welding and would like to get some cast iron welding rod and a blue lens that I have available, you can look on my website and go to the welding section. If you want to watch uh, part two of how to weld cast iron with cast iron welding rod, uh, if you don't see it in the queue uh, beside the video, you can look under the description and I'll have a link to it there. And thank you very much for watching.